Hey, so today I'm here to do a video for you on this look. It wasn't specifically to make tie-dye look and look, but that's what happened because I was playing with this palette. Uh, this is the Pro Fusion Spectrum palette. This was $5 at Walmart. So I wanted to make a whole video kind of using it and reviewing it because for that price though, for colorful mattes, like what the, how the, <laughs> and I've heard people talk about this brand before, but I didn't see anybody show this palette or use this palette. And this one is the most interesting to me. Look at it. You like how long I've been holding it up? Just look at it. Uh. So anyway, if you like this look, if you want to listen to me talk or answer some more questions, then just keep watching. Okay, so my whole house is silent right now. No idea how long that'll last. And I'm excluding Nyx because she's never silent. <laughs> but I mean, the baby is asleep and Isaiah is asleep and there's not a TV on. There's no sound, so feeling calm. I'm gonna use this Smashbox eyeshadow primer again. I don't know, I really like this stuff, okay? I'm going to take this angled brush, okay? We're gonna try to do something that I've never done before and I don't know how well it's gonna work, but. Oh man, just, you know, ignore the 800 like eyebrow hairs are going on. I don't know if you're close enough to see them, but. They're definitely there. They're only on this side though. Like, I wonder if I can even grow an eyebrow anymore on this side, cause like, what? Let's just start carving, I guess. How come every time I make a video, I choose like something that's not simple at all to do? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to put some colors inside of this block that I've created. I think I'm gonna start with the shade Bermuda, light blue color. Sorry, I didn't say anything about shades earlier. To get the most pigmentation, just go in with your finger. <laughs> that will be the best. Um, it's just a little hard right now because I'm trying to do it in an exact spot. My finger don't fit in here. I probably, in all reality, should have used a different concealer. I used the e.l.f. camo concealer. And the thing with that is when you use it as an eyeshadow base, it ends up just drying. Like it's completely dry, it's not tacky anymore, so nothing's sticking to it. <sighs> wow, Sydney. Let's do green, which is lucky. Feeling lucky. Oh, this has more color for show. I'm gonna take a sponge applicator and just try using this. Okay, I'm gonna take the colors that I used around this and just try to like blend them out. Oh my god, I've been filming forever. Good thing I'm only doing one eye at a time. Jesus. I'm like a 20 minute job. What the fuck? Can anyone see? The color's literally not taking in a line right here. What the fuck is that line, dude? Hmm, one with the finger. Finger, help me. I want to bring this literally all the way up to the eyebrow and then just carve out the eyebrow. I'll be back after I carve out my eyebrow and try to fix the situation happening. You know what? I'm gonna do the other fucking eye because clearly this has taken 17 years. Uh, yeah, I'm back just to let you know. Wow, like the major difference here. All I did was take the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. I use this one because it doesn't like set on itself. It's still sticky. I put it all over my eye and like making the line was so much easier and so much more pigmented by doing that. I just wanted to let everybody know if you're gonna use this palette, use a sticky concealer. Okay, so here's what my eye looks like. What I did was uh, completely took this side off and just redid it the way that I did this eye. Sorry, I wasn't filming that, but basically I did the same exact thing, except I just started with concealer on the whole thing and I used a different concealer. And yeah, so they both look a lot better, I think. <laughs> So since I was gonna do some of the questions that I didn't finish in the last video, 
I remember one of the questions was, do I have any tips for winged eyeliner? So I'm gonna do my winged eyeliner with you today. Normally I don't, cause like it's just like the same thing every day, but we'll do some teaching, I guess. I really, I don't know. You can just watch what I do. I use the Essence Super Precise Eyeliner, long lasting waterproof. This is my favorite. I even have a backup. I actually had two backups, but now I opened it. Wow, good focusing. Um, I get these from Ulta for like $3 or something on online. I, don't, I haven't looked in store, but these are my favorite. They have the tiniest tip that I have found, thank God. Cause I can't do shit without a tiny tip. What are you doing? Yeah, okay, tiny tip. Ugh. Super black and super easy to use. It doesn't get all crackly whenever I layer it. And it's pretty matte. It's not the mattest I've used, but it's matte. So that's good. Pretty waterproof. I haven't had any problems with it transferring or getting fucked up in my eyes water. So let's go ahead and do a wing, shall we? What I do is decide the angle I want to do it at. Sometimes I want to do them more straight. Sometimes I want to do them more up and curly. Usually no matter what I do though, they end up being fat boys because I end up like messing up and just fixing them and fixing them until they're like huge. Sometimes I can get away with like a skinny one and I'm like very happy about it because I like the way the skinny ones look, but usually not that lucky. So I'm just following what this already looks like since uh done carved out the colors. I feel like if I have any tip is just make sure your brush is like super wet so that it glides easily. I feel like that's kind of intimidating because you don't want there to be like a ton of product and make a mess. But if it's not gliding, it's going to be patchy. Oh boy, the fuck. See, it's okay if you mess up down here because you can just erase it with concealer and make whatever you want. I try to look down into my mirror so that there is less creasing happening on my eyes. I feel like eyeliner is such a personal thing. It really depends on your eye shape and how you want your wing to look. Just try to look at it from all angles so you can see where it looks like deformed at. <laughs> Obviously it's a little fucked up down here. Sometimes I'll try to fix it with a wipe and just like take my nail and scrape at it, but usually this just makes it more of a mess. There's my fat boy wing. My favorite brush for doing this is a brush that isn't even made anymore. If anyone has any type of dupe, please let me know. It's an e.l.f. flat brush. Whoops. It was like a dollar and now they make them and they're fatter. Like the one that I have is super thin on the tip. God damn, this camera don't focus worth the shit. It's like super duper thin. It's like a paintbrush it kind of looks like. By the way, if you do this eyeshadow look, can I just say it will look 8 million times better if you carve out your brows after you do it. I feel like that just made it look so much more professional. I'm gonna do the other one off camera and put on lashes. I always use Salon Perfect 614 lashes. I wish that I could get away with using bigger eyelashes, but for some reason, they do not fit on my eye right or look right or stay right. They're just so difficult. And whenever I use my Salon Perfect 614s, I glue them on under my eyelashes. Right up under there, you know. I'm sure you've seen people do that in videos like a while back and most people probably don't do it anymore, but I still do it because if not, my wing gets fucked up when I put them on. Don't ask me how, it just happens. Okay, here is the eyes. They are finally done good enough. So I decided to put on my tie-dye shirt so that it would match my fucking eyes. <laughs> Why did my voice do that? Yeah, so we're gonna finish the face finally. Why does it take me so long to film videos? <laughs> Why? Also, I'm just gonna re-straighten my hair because it's been so long. <laughs> I've got Isaiah out there cooking. The baby's watching TV. Apparently she's starting to cry. She has not slept hardly at all today, so that's probably what her problem is. I was gonna do a quick conclusion out of what I thought of this eyeshadow palette. Here's the thing. My eyes look really pretty and pigmented. 
you just have to use it right and I feel like that's the case with all colorful eyeshadow palettes there's always people that are gonna say it sucks and it's not pigmented or it doesn't blend or something but I think you just have to use them correctly because if not you ain't gonna get no pigmentation but clearly it's possible so for five dollars hello made a pretty look okay I'm gonna use my wet n wild stick foundation in porcelain because this is the fastest way and really just want to fucking get this video done at some point today <laughs> be great I had Isaiah wash my brushes yesterday it wasn't all of them but they're still kind of wet <laughs> so I don't know how this is going to affect the foundation okay <laughs> one question says how are you so creative with your looks I'm gonna tell you right now what I do is go on Instagram and like go in the is it the search bar it's like the thing that just shows you like random people's stuff not even people you follow and mine is full of makeup and nail stuff and I just look in there and look in there and look in there until I get inspiration <laughs> and I don't copy someone like I don't look at their picture and just do that but I'll be like oh I like those colors together or I like the shape of that or how they did something and I wouldn't normally do this the only reason I'm doing it is because I'm making videos so I want to actually do interesting type of looks <laughs> if it was just me living my normal daily life I wouldn't honestly do so many crazy looks I mean sometimes I would but recently I've been trying to just do interesting colorful eye popping <laughs> eye popping <laughs> eye catching <laughs> things uh, so that I can like put them on my Instagram so that my feed is more makeup-y. You already know what powder we're gonna use. And a wettish brush. We're trying to get Lila to hold her own bottle in there. She's kind of doing it. I mean she's doing it but she keeps dropping it and then doesn't know how to pick it back up. <laughs> okay I'm gonna use the e.l.f. camo concealer of course. Shade Fair Warm which is honestly so light. <laughs> If you pale, this is a shade for you. Okay, someone asked me what baby names I liked but didn't use. I really was on the cusp of naming her Nova. And Alicia told me that name and I was like, well, wait a second, that's that's cute. I like it. And I told Isaiah and he was like, oh yeah, that's the name. That's it. That's what I want to name her. And he always called her that when she was in my belly. But I kept telling people They'd be like, you know you want to name her or whatever? And I'd be like, oh, I think maybe Nova? I don't know. And they'd be like, oh, I know so-and-so named Nova. And then I'd be like, well, I feel like everybody tells me that. Because several people did that. And I was like, well, I don't want her name to be something that everyone else is already being named. <laughs> but now I feel like if I ever did have another child and it was a girl, its name would have to be Nova. But I ended up picking Lila because... I was trying to just think of something unique, but not like crazy, like, you know, some people, <laughs> some celebrities. I was thinking that I really liked the name Delilah, and then I was like, but really I don't like the duh part. <laughs> like, I don't like names that start with D. And then I was like, wait, what about Lila? And it was like a life-changing moment. I was like, that's a pretty name. And it was like I had come up with it myself, but <laughs> obviously that's not the case. Because other people definitely have that name. When I tell people though, they act like it's like an old timey name. Like, like it'd be a grandma's name. <laughs> what kind of music do you listen to? Okay, so I don't exactly like specific music. All I know is I don't like country. <laughs> what I normally do is just listen to the top 50 United States or global on Spotify and find new music like that. <laughs> and usually I like rap and sometimes I like poppy things. Really I just like 21 Pilots <laughs> and Fall Out Boy the most. Like if they make a new song then like I automatically like it because it's them. I'm gonna use my Maybelline City Bronzer and shade of honey. Okay other than the Ouija board have you ever had any paranormal experiences? No not really. Literally the only ones I can think of are when I was like way younger in like ninth grade or maybe like 10th or 11th grade but two occasions that I can recall where something randomly flew across the room now I didn't see it get like like lift up into the air and get thrown across the room but I'm actually gonna use my Tarte Captivating Blush because I have it in forever and it's peachy and I feel like it'll look pretty with my eyes so 
Yeah, anyway, I remember me and my friends, I think, I think it was Alicia and Haley. Uh, we were at my grandma's in her computer room. I was on the computer. They were both doing something completely different. I think Alicia was like looking in a mirror and I don't even know. But randomly a hair clip flew into the middle of the room and just like landed in the middle of the room. <laughs> we were like, like literally at first none of us even noticed because we all were like, someone threw that. And then one of us is like, uh, did someone throw it? Like what just happened? It was like, I didn't throw it. They're like, I didn't throw it. They're like, I didn't throw it. And we're all like, okay, what the fuck? Then how did that just land in the middle of the fucking floor? It was very weird. And I don't know why it happened. <laughs> and then another time, I was at my friend's house. Okay, in his apartment, the walls did not reach the ceilings. So there was like a gap above all the walls between each room. And we just were in the living room and we like just walked in and this weird, what even was it? Some kind of weird UFO looking like toy or something. I don't know. It like randomly just like boom, like crashed down and like came out of nowhere. And we're like, what the fuck? Where did that come from? And he's like, I swear to God, this was in the other room. And we're like, okay, how the hell did it get over the wall and in between the ceiling and crash down? We're the only people in the house. So that's like the only things that I can remember that I consider to be paranormal, but were they really? I don't know. I'm gonna use my Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighter Crystal High. I looked this up on the internet and it had like a completely different name than what the packaging says. So that's very weird, but any major influences that got you into makeup? I know exactly the one person that got me into makeup and you might know her from YouTube. I mean, she's still on YouTube, but I don't think she's like, the most popular person, but I got on YouTube for the first time when I was like 18 and I typed in colorful eyeshadow looks because I just wanted to be able to do some pretty ass eyeshadow looks. And I literally had no idea what I was doing when it came to makeup. My makeup was garbage. The first person that came up <laughs> is this girl. Her name is Time the Infamous. I don't know if any of you have happened to seen her videos. She's kind of weird and I'm still subscribed to her. And she still does really pretty colorful eyeshadow looks. But she was definitely my first inspiration into makeup because I was like shook at how amazingly beautiful her like rainbow eyeshadow tutorial was. Oh my god. And that is how I got into makeup people. <laughs> Other than that, I feel like just anybody that I watch on YouTube, any makeup guru was an influence because that is the way that I learned. And Alicia. She probably wouldn't think that that makes any sense, but she was doing makeup like way before me and doing like the prettiest looks and I'd always be like, Alicia, I love your eyeshadow, girl, what you doing? And I never did it because I suck. That's probably honestly why I ended up looking up how to do a colorful eyeshadow look is because she always did really pretty ones. I'm just gonna put my jelly balm on. <laughs> Ew, God, this stuff tastes weird, but it looks good. It literally just looks like my lips, but pinker. I need to do the bottom of my eyes. Oh my God. Probably won't do very much <laughs> at all. I really like the fact that it's like all matte. Kind of don't even want to put anything in the inner corner. Maybe I'll just put glitter like I normally do. We'll just take a Stila Glitter and Glow. The shade Perlina. And this will be the inner corner. Okay, someone said, you look so good, what's your secret? I don't know specifically what that means. <laughs> um, don't know what my secret is either. <laughs> I'm gonna say it has to do with the extensions, the makeup. I'm not gonna say the clothes. I'm not very good at picking out nice clothes. I feel like all my clothes are really lame and boring. It's definitely not the nails. <laughs> Cause my nails look like shit. Should I do a color in the waterline? I feel like I should. I wanna do this color. <gasps> I love this color. It's like periwinkle. Color pop. Prance. It looks disgusting in there and it's super dried out. Dude, I love when my camera doesn't focus. But if I just take it on the end of a brush, get a clump of it and put it up in here. You could use only one makeup brand for the rest of your life. What would it be? Hmm. I'm kind of thinking it might be Wet n Wild. 
Everything that I love is from a different brand, so I've been giving something up no matter what. So I might as well just pick some random brand. Fuck, I don't know. This question's too hard, I can't answer it. Okay, you guys, here's the finished look. I gotta go, cause I really wanna go eat, and I think the food is done. If you like this look, or this video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe, and I'll be back soon with more videos. Thanks for watching, bye.